Good morning and welcome for to our service for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Uh, thank you to all that have taken part in these uh, virtual uh, services. You will, I hope, know that uh, next week we intend to be back in the building uh, at, for a 10 o'clock service. There will be some restrictions to that and uh, we are looking uh, to actually have people sign up to so that we know roughly what numbers we might be expecting uh, but more of that will come out um, uh, after the PCC. We begin our worship this morning by singing Come Down O Love Divine. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and also with you. We pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we bring to mind those times when we know we have failed our Lord. And Nick leads us in our confession. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice. 
and confess our sins to God our Redeemer. O King enthroned on high, filling the earth with your glory, holy is your name, Lord God Almighty. In our sinfulness we cry to you to take our guilt away and to cleanse our lips, to speak your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you of your offences. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And the collect for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, send down upon your church the riches of your spirit and kindle in all who minister the gospel your countless gifts of grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Daphne reads our gospel for us this morning and then preaches. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for that that was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields. In one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. An author was being interviewed following the success of her first novel, which had become a bestseller in record time. When asked how it felt to be so successful so early in her writing career, she replied that when she had finished the book, it felt as if she had given birth to a child. It was hard work and it was painful, but once completed, she had a huge sense of achievement. 
This was followed by an equally huge feeling of anxiety as she sent her child out into the world. She could no longer protect it or herself from criticism or rejection. She could only send it out and hope and trust that some people would like and value it. We live our lives in a public arena and we influence people often in ways we cannot imagine. As the author felt vulnerable on the publication of her book, so we too may be aware of our inability to control the way we others react to us. Sometimes though, we may feel that there is a force much greater than ourselves working in our lives and communicating with people around us. Our words and actions, like the seed of the parable, scatter around our homes, our places of work, our churches and our communities. We may well wonder what happen when, happens when our words and actions are centred on making the word of God known in our neighbourhoods. 2,000 years ago in Galilee, we heard in our reading this morning how the people flocked to hear Jesus down by the shore. The crowd that gathered became so large that someone provided a boat for him so that he could push off from the shore a little to enable all to hear what he had to say. He told them a story, a parable about a farmer sowing the seed. Like all good rabbis, he was a master storyteller. In our Lord's time, sowing seed was a haphazard affair. Weeds, most commonly a kind of thorn, were not cleared first, but ploughed into the ground. The paths through the fields became like hard roads and indeed were used as such. Where the underlying, mainly limestone rock, came near the surface, it made the soil very thin. The farmer sowed the seed by hand, broadcasting it, and then the land was ploughed, so the seed landed somewhere, but where? Some fell on the path where the birds ate it, some fell on the rocky places where it couldn't take root. Some fell among the thorns where it was soon choked. The rest fell on the good soil and in time produced a crop, maybe thirtyfold, sixtyfold or even one hundredfold. To his listeners, Jesus' description would have been instantly recognisable. He illustrated his teaching with familiar images and everyday events through the language of work, weather and nature. Language they understood, unlike the dry language of the Pharisees and Sadducees in the temple or synagogues. They listened to him because he spoke their kind of language. It is so easy to become distracted when people talk in a way which does not relate to our lives and needs. To listen, but not to absorb what is being said. To miss the crucial heart of the message which happened to many of Jesus' listeners. Here is Jesus using the seed to teach them and us something today. There comes a moment when Jesus says, Listen, and we do. The story he tells is actually about listening, the way we listen and the way we fail to listen. The people of his time reacted to his words in many different ways, just as we do today. This story is so familiar to many of you. You grew up hearing it. You know what is coming next before the next words are read. Rather like reading well-known and loved bedtime stories to your children or grandchildren. Woe betide you if you miss out some words or change them, or worse still, try to turn over more than one page. Who are we in this story? Who are you? Nobody is going to tell us. We have to find out for ourselves. Only if we decide for ourselves who we are, do we find the motivation to do anything about it after what we have heard? 
The seed is the word of God. Seed that falls on all types of ground, on all types of human hearts. The seed is what God is trying very hard to tell us. It is about many things we hear from our Lord during his time on earth. It is about living with purpose and meaning in our lives, about having something to believe in when life blows up in our face. It is about the way we relate to others, those we live with, those we work with, those we love very much, and those we may find hard or difficult and even dislike. It is about having a hope in our lives that we are part of something much bigger and greater than ourselves. That our time on earth, whether long or short, is part of an eternal reality beyond anything we can imagine. It is about life and love, hope and peace. This is what the seed is all about and God is throwing it to us in the hope that something will take root in the good soil. So how do we respond? Sometimes when we hear God's word, it goes in one ear and out the other. We don't remember what's been said. We hardly notice what we heard. We are like the seed on the stony path. What about the seed that lands on rocky ground? We hear God's message and to begin with, we are very enthusiastic, probably too enthusiastic. We take on too much too soon. We haven't got good roots. Someone suggests a deep commitment and we disappear off the scene. The soil by the rocks has lots of weeds and thorns growing in it. There's a lot of competition for the seeds. We may hear God's message, but there are so many other things going on in our lives which we consider important that the really important message gets choked. We may have many good intentions, but there's the next rung on the promotion ladder. We must find time for a session at the gym. It's the best way to keep fit and the subscription costs a bomb. Sunday is really the only day we can go out as a family. So we go shopping or we go to the beach. We have got such a busy schedule. If we can find time, we'll come along to a service. The demands of the world entrap us and God gets pushed out. There is one more chance for the seed. We hear God's message. The moment is right. We really do hear it. If we use our hearts and minds to, meet, to find the meaning of God's word, if we accept it and it becomes part and parcel of our lives, it will enable our lives to bring forth fruit. We are called to follow Christ and to live the life of God's Spirit as he did. Jesus, not only with his words, but in his life, shows us how to live fulfilled and fruitful lives and to play our part in bringing the world to wholeness. Sometime during your life, you may have been surprised by an unexpected yield from a seed you once sowed. You will never know the total yield of all your labours. You too have little control over the soil. The growing and the harvesting are not up to you. We have to make sure of the high quality of the seed we sow, that we sow in faith and leave the rest to God. As we give proper time and space to God so that we grow in his love bit by bit, faith is translated into action. To use Jesus' words begins to bear fruit, 30-fold, 60-fold, even a hundredfold. We cannot control or demand specific responses to ourselves or the message we pass on. All we can do is act out of loving kindness to those we meet and trust God to fulfil his purpose. In these current times, we have witnessed many such acts. They do not have to stop as we begin returning to a new normal. 
We may never know the long-term effect we have on people through our work and actions. We can prepare the ground and sow the seed, but it is God ultimately who causes seeds to take root, to grow, to flourish and to bear fruit. I want to finish with an encouraging thought. It does not always have to be 100-fold. It can be 30 or 60. God understands that this is what we can do at the time. God knows us so well. Amen. Thank you, Daphne. Nick leads us in the Apostles' Creed as a response to Daphne's sermon. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting. Amen. Richard leads us in our intercessions this morning. Our Father, may your words of truth take root in our hearts and grow to rich maturity. May we hear your will for us and act upon it. May we take seriously our responsibility to encourage and nurture one another in faith at every age, at every stage. Help us to be mindful of our casual words and actions. Sower of truth, hear our prayer. Living God, take root in me. Our Father, we call for your blessing on all those involved as our church buildings reopen and public worship of you recommences. May this time be like a chrysalis, so that our, as our churches reopen, we do not emerge with a sleepy version of what went before, but instead we pray that new, more beautiful and more effective prayer and worship may emerge. So of truth, hear our prayer. Living God, take root in me. Our Father, our homes have been closed and lives disrupted in recent months. We call on you to help individuals and families who are still isolated or struggling to cope, even as this lockdown is eased. Help us through the quarrels and heartaches. Remind us how to honour one another, even as we are cherished and loved by you. Give us loving ears that we may listen, discern, and respond to your voice. May we be more ready to support those who we love and befriend those who we don't. Sower of truth, hear our prayer. Living God, take root in me. Our Father, we pray for the country of Zambia the Diocese of Lusaka and the people of the Cathedral of your Holy Cross. We give thanks that they have been comparatively sheltered from the ravages of Covid and pray that that situation will continue. We pray for those known to us who are unwell at this time, that they may know the strength of your companionship and the healing power of your love. This week we recall the lives of Ronald Young, Sue Staple, Sid Cordery, and others who've died at this season. We ask that their families and friends may experience the blessings you have promised for those who mourn. 
Jesus said to his followers, happy are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. Our Father, may your words of truth take firm root in our hearts and grow to rich maturity. Through times of rain and times of sunshine, may we hear your will for us and act upon it, so we may yield 30, 60, even with your grace, 100 fold. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. peace. God is love and those who live in love live in God and God lives in them. The peace of the triune God be always with you and also with you. Pour upon us the poverty of our love and the weakness of our friends. May it transform them with the fire of your presence for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. Holy Holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord. As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread he gave you thanks he broke it and gave it to them saying take eat this is my body which is given for you do this in remembrance of me at the end of supper Taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit 
as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with Mary Magdalene and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. How deep the Father's love for us Shoulders, 
God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and those you love and pray for always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. And I look forward to seeing some of you as we worship God together in the building next Sunday. Because of that, our opening times will have to have changed. So we will only be open for a quiet individual prayer on Wednesday this week. But hopefully see most of you on Sunday at 10 o'clock. God bless you all.